millions of people, billions of people, need the um, calming assurance that comes from experientially verifying the existence beyond the grave. And I think that at the end of history, this is what will happen, that very shortly, the the instability built into the system is going to transform material existence beyond all imagining. The culture, the, the global civilization is dying. There are too many problems. They're accumulating. You have to be blind to not realize that this is really, in fact, the end of the road. And that it is... Um, you know, the ozone hole, the toxic pollution, the toxification of the ocean. We can't pretend that these things are easily reversed by simply recycling or something like that. No, instead of this clutching to keep it all like it is and say, oh, no, no, please, no future, please, no future, we have to say, okay, deep breath. It's like that first wave of psilocybin when you feel it sweep over you, or ayahuasca, and you realize, you know, my God, my God, here it comes, I've done it this time. <laughs> well, we've done it this time, folks. We have been planning human mass suicide for 15,000 years. Not a moment was not dedicated to this goal, and now it's upon us. And it's a, a cause for great rejoicing. We will go off into hyperspace. The planet will heave an enormous sigh of relief. <laughs> and if it can come back from an asteroid impact that leaves nothing larger than a chicken standing around, then I dare say in 50, 60,000 years, you know, the glaciers will run, the jungles will restabilize, the ocean will cleanse itself. And as the I Ching says, no blame, no blame. The metaphor that we have to keep in front of ourselves, you know, you, you all know the cliche, uh, ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny, right? Do we all understand what this means? Yes. No. It, it, it's, it means it's something that embryologists in the 19th century created, and I think it's fairly profound. It's that a fetus, a human fetus, recapitulates the entire history of evolution oh, on this okay. planet. It begins as a tiny one-celled organism, it becomes a fish, it becomes a reptile, it becomes a mammal, it becomes a human being, but the part of the recapitulation of phylogeny that we've ignored is extinction. For, for a million years, we have been uh, afloat in the gentling, amniotic ocean of the planetary environment. Imagine the fetal crisis of birth. You exist as a fetus inside your mother. Food is delivered through the umbilical cord. Oxygen delivered the same way. Endless space, weightlessness. The dream, paradise, all needs are met. And then something begins to go wrong. <laughs> the walls close in. The and you begin to be propelled into the birth canal. Strangulation. Death. The fetus must know at that moment incredible fear. Everything is going to be destroyed. The world is ending. Yet, how could the fetus at that moment imagine Hieronymus Bosch, or nuclear physics, or global politics, or star flight, or any of these things. We are now in the birth canal of a new ontological order of human existence, and the walls are closing in. There's no going back. The amniotic ocean, the, the unpolluted, endless frontier of a game-rich planet, forget it. We've been in the birth canal for 10, 15,000 years, and now we're approaching transition. 
the most violent part of the birthing process. And all you can do is scream unless you have some superordinate knowledge of what is going on. The shamans, shamans in the rainforest, shamans among us, and as a goal for each of us, must act as the midwives to a new order of existence. There's no going back. We've burnt this scene to the ground. And the womb is stretched, the womb is traumatized, but it can recover. And But the, the child and the mother must be parted. Again, the metaphor of pregnancy. If a pregnancy is somehow um, doesn't, if the birth is not smooth, if the child is not parted from the mother, toxemia sets in. And then both, and then you have a real crisis. The life of the mother, the life of the child, everything is in danger. This is the re this is the real problem. I don't think we've reached that place yet. I think that we'll go fairly smoothly into hyperspace, but I think the emergence in the last 20 years of uh, masses of human beings taking psychedelics, masses of human beings talking about getting in touch with the spirit, talking about a, a new shamanism, an archaic revival, this means we are very, very close to seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. And it's a radiance, the, the, the meaning and the depth of which cannot be told because we are, after all, being born into a higher dimension. But if we believe in the dynamics of nature, if we believe in the rightness of being, then there should be no anxiety. There should be no alarm. This is what psychotherapy and shamanism and all these things exist for, is to spread the truth about the situation so that we don't clutch and we don't hold on and spread panic and hysteria. Uh, and that's what I've learned from psychedelics. Don't you think that that the collapse of everything familiar is going to open our hearts? I mean, the, the most open-hearted of us open first, but before this is over, every one of us will probably bury the dead and walk through, I mean, hell, and it will open the heart. It can't fail to open the heart. I mean, when a friend dies in your arms, maybe the first time it doesn't work, but the second, the third, the fourth, I mean, we are going to get it sooner or later. And it's, it's bigger than all of us. I mean, it's just so big. And it's always been there in miniature in the phenomenon of our own deaths. But we didn't. We don't look at that. But you know, if you will contemplate your own death, your heart will open. I mean, the truth that I've learned from psychedelics, to put it into bumper sticker form, <laughs> if that's the way to think of it, mm -hmm. is uh, this is the hardest truth there is. This is the distillation of fifty thousand years of. Of, of nomadic hunting and orgies around the campfire and rockets to the moon and, and the whole thing, it can be summed up in a single phrase. Nothing lasts. Nothing lasts. Everything is changing into something else. Heraclitus said this. He said, Pante Rea, all flows. Uh, we flow into this world, we inhabit it and we move on. Nothing lasts, not your career, not your fortune, and finally not even your own sweet self. Everything is replaced. And if we can open ourselves to this by the heart, by the, by the mind, I mean, there's all ways, then we will find the dignity to, and, and this is not about being born in the generation at the end of the world. This is something that would have worked at every moment in history. After all, Heraclitus lived 2,500 years ago. This is the truth of true maturity. Nothing lasts. I mean, every time I, I take a trip or, or eat a fine meal or make love or visit an art gallery, 
I feel the transience of it, and that enriches it. That's the heart dimension, is the poignancy of knowing that this too shall pass. Everything is in transition, and uh, the material body can resists this truth because the material body understands that if it passes, then it will be replaced by something which it can imagine, and that, that triggers a, an anxiousness. But I think this is what psychedelics teach, that uh, nothing, nothing lasts. And if we can incorporate that and live it, we will live every moment to its fullest. The people who are HIV positive, they get to walk around with the knowledge that nothing lasts, and in a way they are privileged because after all, any one of us could be bitten by a snake today and die or have a tree fall on us or be run over by a bus. We would have missed living in that heartful dimension where you know that you, you, you too will, uh, will move from the scene and make way for something else. This episode is sponsored by Audible. Terence McKenna was a profound advocate for psychedelics and freedom of consciousness. Much of the psychedelic renaissance we experience today can be linked to the ideas he pioneered in the 1990s. Terence passed away in the year 2000, but his lectures and writings become more and more relevant as time progresses. You can access the profound insights of Terence McKenna through his audiobooks on Audible, we highly recommend Food of the Gods, which is a deep exploration of humans' symbiotic relationship with mind-altering plants. Use our link at audible.com slash afterschool or text AFTERSCHOOL to 500-500 to start listening with a free 30-day Audible trial and get full access to thousands and thousands all-you-can-listen audiobooks, original entertainment, and podcasts included in the Audible Plus plan. Audible makes it easy to absorb the information while you are cooking, cleaning, exercising, or on the go. So visit audible.com slash afterschool or text afterschool to 500, 500.